Uh, I'll just quickly share a few thoughts on this particular sector because I recollect my own journey some 18 years back when I thought only in one single line that many commercial architects are produced in this country every year. <coughs> and what is it that they finally create? Because an architect has been equated next to Lord Vishwakarma in India uh, as somebody who's creating something. <coughs> But my question is, what are we actually ending up creating? Are we creating buildings? Are we creating shelters? Or are we creating barriers? And what I really found, it's again a shift in the way you start looking at things. While you create buildings, but the same becomes a huge barrier, <coughs> the way you have created it, number one. Number two, accessibility. <coughs> Sorry. The idea of accessibility to me now is no longer about buildings, it's actually about the culture. Because what are we demanding as a building? And why are we silent and tolerant about it till now? It's 21st century and we are pushing back, if not with accessibility, then how are we going moving from a charity model approach to a social model approach? Number three, accessibility ramp or a toilet. That's the approach, if I can say it in Hindi, <clears throat> just like when a child has to pass a school exam and you say if 40% is okay, so is 40% really a great percentage? When we do not accept this in our own homes, how do we accept this in the same society? Because 40% means you will provide only basic minimum amenities which most likely may not be always available in 100% ratios so you'll find an accessible toilet available but locked you will find a building which does not have an entrance which is accessible but has an accessible toilet inside so there is no i would say systemic coordination to understand accessibility in the sense that it first begins with information <clears throat> and i would say how much time does it take for us to tell that whether we are accessible if government really did i no, what is the final outcome of the Accessible India campaign in the second phase. Fact is, I believe it must be made mandatory right now that every public building should at least put this information on the web, whether they are accessible or not. Through that computer digital database, in five minutes, I can have the total country's picture. Because the second point which comes in accessibility is the enforcement by the act. We had the first act, which lasted for almost 20 years, and then came the next act, the RPWD 2016. If you read carefully, <clears throat> the act has always given some guidelines and has given a broad positive mandate. But there's a catch within the act. The act says that by 2022, the entire infrastructure should become accessible. The question is, it does not say what if not. And what further it says is, who can give you the extension? So it's like we are already providing a escape route within the policy guideline and which is where I strongly critique that. Because unless this strong enforcement happens, we will never be able to achieve this vision and we will continue to, I mean, I feel really sad that accessibility is talked about sometimes as a charitable issue that please make things accessible. Why? It's public issue. It's a taxpayer's investment and everybody must have equity if not equality, at least equity of access to every single place, right from the first mile to the last mile. And the last point which, with which I'll uh, stop for a while here is, <clears throat> is about how accessibility needs to be measured. The question is, whenever a building plan is sanctioned, whether you today go for a hotel, you go for a transport infrastructure, or you go for an educational infrastructure, who is checking that the built form is accessible? Do we have enough people in this country who are vigilant enough to evaluate, assess, and second, give them a go ahead so that the building is not given an occupation, occupancy certificate till it is 100% insured accessible. And since all these are, I would say, bottlenecks, which we only collectively can address, I believe the role of technology can play a big role, but I think it does not require too much of advanced technology to think about these basics but we need to definitely bring this right space movement as, as the front step uh, before it actually sulks into a, a charity-based movement. Thank you.